every day Never notice how the time slips away People come, seasons go We got something that'll never grow old I don't care if the sun don't shine Rain keeps pouring down on me and mine Cause our kind of love never seems to get old It's better than silver and treasure chest Got so heavy that I had to rest I let it slip away from me Didn't need it anyway So I let it slip away I don't care if the sun don't shine The rain comes pouring down on me and mine Cause our kind of love never seems to be old It's better than silver and Sun don't shine, or the rain comes pouring down on me and mine. Cause our kind of love never seems to get old. It's better than silver and Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Silver and Gold by Neil Young. Absolutely gorgeous song, this one. Loads of interesting techniques going on as well. It's in drop D tuning, so make sure you tune your thicker string down one tone. You can use your fourth string, remember, as a reference there to get that thicker string down. Let's get to a close-up and check it out. This is the intro. So starting here, second finger, seventh fret, third string, third finger, seventh fret, second string. And you're going to put your first finger down in the fifth fret of the second string, because actually you're going to hammer that third finger down. Okay, so make sure you can do that first of all. So just don't worry about strumming anything else. Just use your first finger to pick the second string and hammer that third finger down. Now actually you're going to play the thicker string at the same time. So get that down first of all. Once you've done that, the first finger is actually going to move to the fifth fret of the thinner string, and you're going to do a little up down, little strum there with the first finger, just on the thinner strings. Okay, so pick together, hammer, first finger moves over, up down. Then you're going to thumb is going to play the open fourth string. And you're going to little put your hammer with your little finger into the eighth fret. Leave all of the other fingers there. And then you've got a little up, down, down strum. Okay, so the third finger hammer on with the thicker string. Up, down. Then with the open fourth string, little finger hammer on. Up, down, down. Then it repeats the first phrase. 
But then this next time we do the same thing, but instead of doing the hammer on with the little finger, we lift off first finger and we're going to play the thinner string. Then with that same strumming. So. Thicker string, up, down, fourth string, up, down, down. Thicker string, up, down, open, up, down, down. Hammer, up, down, hammer, up, down, down. Hammer, up, down. Now that isn't exactly what's going on, it's a little looser than that and you might find some extra strums but that pattern I think is about as close as you're going to get as a starting point so learn that fairly exactly and then try and just loosen it up once you're confident with it. The important things are getting that bass note in the right place and the hammer-ons, uh, letting the right open strings ring out as well is one of the key things. Of course, with all Neil Young stuff, the devil is in the details. So you want to start with that and then really give it a good listen and try and pick up on the vibe because exactly how hard the strings are played and the feeling of the strumming is something that's worth paying attention to if you want to get uh, properly into Neil Young's style. So let's now get into the verse. So we start with the D chord and we're going to play the root note and then the fifth string with a little first finger strum down. Really good pattern to get used to doing anyway. Working hard. Same idea on the A. Every day. But he's got here the bass note if you're going to keep walking it. You need to use your thumb to play that note because it's obviously it's tuned down to a D and you want an E is the fifth of the chord there. Worth noting that sometimes when he plays it live he seems to play it differently and that is he plays an, an A with a D bass so he plays a a D triad up here. So working hard every day. Okay, it's not all the time. It's only a kind of a seems to be a live thing. On the record, I'm pretty sure I can hear the A with that bass note there. Using, I guess he's using his thumb, but he could be using could be using your second finger. You could try that as well if you're not uh, comfortable getting the thumb over to reach that bass note. So D. Working hard. A chord with a walking bend, then G. Same idea. So this is just like a, the top part of a uh, E-shaped bar chord. And we're just alternating between the fourth string and the fifth string. You actually have to move your third finger over. Lovely. So this is simply five, but a little slide into it with the third finger. Four. Two, oh, this is all on the fourth string. Then you're doing like a little A uh, with a mini bar using your first finger to bar the second fret strings, two, three, and four. And you're going to hammer on together the second finger into the third fret of the second string and the fourth finger into the fourth fret of the fourth string. Then you lift them off and just you're just playing those two notes, but just use the bar open second string and fourth string and then put the bar back on okay little hammer on i'm just using my thumb and my second finger but i don't think it would matter if you're using your first finger for that so d in heart a chord then g Single notes, sixth, back to the D, A chord, G, single notes, and sixth. Okay, now we're just doing a D chord. And then it's a G with a B bass. Technically, I guess G6 if you let the thinnest string open. I think um, very often when I'm doing this chord, the underneath of the first finger is muting the thinnest string. 
Okay, sometimes it rings out, but mostly it's not. So it's going from a D to a G with a B bass. Again, the, the picking thing here becomes a bit of a big deal. So you're going to play the D bass note. Bass, down, up, down, up, bass with a hammer on. And then just it's th this hammer on, up, down, up, bass then another down. The, the key thing here again with Neil is this feeling of strumming even when you're picking out the notes. So even though I'm doing this, I'm, I'm definitely feeling it much more of a strumming thing than anything else. So this is a D, going to an E minor over D. So just leave your third finger down, slide it up to the fifth fret. Second finger goes down the fourth fret of the fourth, uh, the third string. First finger goes down the third fret of the first string. This is an E minor. There's D minor open, D sharp, D minor. That's uh, what's going on. So we've gone D, E minor, move it up two frets. This is an F sharp minor over D. So we've still got that D bass note. And then it goes up to a G, which is exactly, looks like a D chord, but with your first finger in the seventh fret, still with the open D. So D, E minor over D, F sharp minor over D, to G over D. Third finger still stays on the second string, but now moves down to the third fret. And first finger's in the second fret of the fourth string. A7 sus and it goes to a regular A7 so second finger second fret second string so uh So the rhythm for this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, one, two. Again, it's that keeping the hand moving. kind of strumming continuously but with the chord changes that one's pushed there one two and three and four and one and two and three and four I'm just strumming with my first finger here by the way yeah that's I don't really feel like I need to pull uh, any particular bass notes out so at that point I'm just really strumming with the first finger don't worry if you hit that open A string it sounds fine as well all through that
This is a really great song for working on your dynamics. It's not technically difficult. It's not an easy beginner song either. But once you've got the fingering down, you've got the chords in, you really want to start thinking about how you feel when you play it. There's a few parts where it's kind of easy to play it with too much uh, grabbing at the strings kind of thing. You want it, it wants to be subtle. You want to try and really feel the strings under your fingers, remembering what the song's about while you're playing it, and trying to tap into that kind of communicating through the music rather than it being a technical exercise. Uh, a lot of the stuff like the strumming needs to be quite subtle. It doesn't want to be too hard or it doesn't fit the song. So once you've got the kind of the nuts and bolts down, you've got the fingerings, you've got the chords, you feel like you're technically doing it correctly, this is definitely a great one. Again, listening to the original recording and trying to absorb the vibe there and then trying to communicate that feeling uh, while you're playing. I think that's a real important part of playing Neil's stuff particularly. I mean, it should be... All music should be much more about feeling than, than technical stuff anyway. But with these sort of tunes, they just don't work if you don't put that level of thought into it. To, 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 uh, the more you think, the more you stink. It's not about thinking. But it does require thinking at the initial stages. You want to, you have to transcend the thought part into just feeling. But that often requires a little bit of conscious effort at the start. I know I'm kind of contradicting myself, but it, it, it's the truth. You do have to think about it a bit and keep working on it, thinking about the dynamics, thinking about the subtlety, trying not to be too aggressive with any of the parts and thinking about it. But then after you've done that enough, the hope will be that you stop thinking about it and then you can just play it and feel it. Um, I'm hoping that makes sense. Anyway, uh, if you're a big Neil fan like me, do go and check out the website. I've done loads and loads of Neil Young songs. In fact, I think I've done more Neil Young songs than anyone else, and I'm planning to keep it that way. Uh, so, yeah. What other Neil songs would you like me to do? I was just looking through my uh, Neil Young favorites the other day, and I'm like, I've done like most of my favorite Neil Young songs I've done lessons on now. So what are the other ones that you'd like me to do? Let me know in the comments below if you're over on YouTube or the comments over on the website site as well. Uh, do remember that we've got a request board as well. And there's hardly any Neil Young songs on there. What's going on with that, right? Neil Young fans of the world, get over to the request board on justinguitar.com forward slash songs and let me know uh, what songs you'd like me to do next. I uh, really hope you enjoyed this one. Have yourselves a fantastic day and I'll see you plenty more very soon. Bye-bye.